Welcome to episode 51 of the Food Grads podcast, the podcast where we explore careers in the food, beverage, and agricultural industries. I'm your host, Veronica Hislop, a PhD candidate in molecular science and career partner with Food Grads. This week on the podcast, I interviewed Esta Ejawade, HACCP coordinator at Sofina Foods. Sofina Foods is a Canadian company dedicated to providing great tasting, high quality food products for their customers. Their offerings include pork, beef, fish, turkey, and chicken products with the brand offerings like Cuddy, Lilydale, Jane's, Mastro, Gletcher's, and Vienna. In this episode, Esther talked to me about her role as a HACCP coordinator at Sofina Foods and what that role is really about. We got in the nitty gritty of the role and I asked Esther about her day-to-day duties, some of the habits that she uses to succeed at her role, and she clarified to me that a HACCP coordinator is not a desk job. We also talked about her transition from her time at the University of Alberta as a master's student in animal sciences and the skills which applied from her degree to now. We rounded out the episode by Esta giving advice on what a student should do if they are looking to get into the meat industry. So enough with that introduction, let's get on with the show. Okay. Okay. So um, thank you so much, Esther, for taking the time to come on the show today. I, I'm i really excited to to talk to another, well, you're a former student, but you've gone through the graduate experience a little bit. So I think that there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about and just learn more about how you transitioned from graduate school to a role like a HACCP coordinator. I'm, I'm really excited to hear your story. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I look forward to you too. I had to get you on the show when I saw you on LinkedIn. And and first of all, congratulations. I see that you are a permanent resident now in Canada. So that is really exciting. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. To get okay. us started, I'd love to first talk about what you do now. Could you tell me a little bit more about your role at Safina Foods and what exactly is Safina Foods? Okay, I'll start by talking a, a little bit more about Sofina Food, then I'm going to dive into my role at Sofina Food. Sofina Food is a privately owned Canadian company whose goal is to provide great tasting, high quality food products for retail and food services. We actually have about nine different brands and we produce and distribute premium poultry, pork, fish, and beef products ranging from fresh and frozen to fully cooked products. So currently I work with the Lily Day brand at um, Edmonton, North Plant. I work as an asset coordinator. And what we do at Lily Day brand is that we majorly process and distribute stocky products. And my main responsibility is to ensure that meat produced in the plant is safe for human consumption. And this entails being actively involved in all the production processes to ensure that we are implementing and we are in compliance with all food safety regulations, either by Safe Food for Canadian regulation, that is like the CFIA regulation, mm-hmm. or other food safety bodies such as the Britain Retail Consortium, that's BRC, as well as the SQF. Yeah, so that is what I do basically. Wow. Well, that's a really important role. And I know, especially for meats, there's like a high, high level of food safety that has to um, go up. And it's really cool that you're working at such a recognizable brand being Lilydale. Like I'm very familiar with it. It's something I've seen. I've I've eaten their products. I do eat their products. So I'm very familiar. Yeah. Like I'm so happy to be working with them. I go to the store and especially when I'm referring to, I'm like pointing out our product. (laughs) It's the best feeling. Like, I mean, you're actively involved and especially you being a role as a HACCP coordinator, you would know exactly from going from the beginning of the factory right up to the door, like the exact processes that are they're going in place. So like, exactly. Yes, I am. So tell me a little bit more about what a lot of people are familiar with HACCP, but would you be able to tell me a little bit more about what HACCP actually is and just go from there? Okay, okay. I would like to start by saying defining what ASEP really is. 
So ASEP actually stands for Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. So ASEP is like a management system in which food safety is addressed through the analysis of and control of biological, chemical, and physical hazards from the beginning of raw material production to procurement of raw materials to handling to manufacturing to distribution and consumption of the finished product. So in lay, in lay term, I would define ASEP as a point at which identified hazards known to occur are being controlled because not all hazards can be prevented, but that point in which they are controlled. So for example, we have age determination, which is a critical control point for beef plants. The age of cattle must be determined immediately after stoning by checking the dentition and confirming the birth record to ensure that uh, specified risk material, which is SRM, are removed from cattle to over 30 months of age. They are called OTM during processing. This single but critical action helps to prevent BSC or mad cow disease from getting into the food chain, which if not identified or controlled and contracted by human can cause severe effect on the brain. So that is what ASEP actually do. Oh, wow. That's, I know it's such a silly thing, but I never even considered the fact about how in depth it would be even just like to know the age of the animal and making sure like that is something that has to be associated with food safety. It's just never something I thought about. Yeah, it is. And um, we have quality, quality assurance technicians always out on the floor and monitoring that aspect of control, that area to which we have to control that hazard. Yeah. Okay. And with your role being the one who's... Uh, who, pardon me, being a HACCP coordinator, I know for some facilities that role can kind of fall into the QA. So I just was curious, is it more like a um, back of the house kind of job where you're really like diving into the documentation? Is that what your day to day looks like? Yes. Yeah, so for as an ASAP coordinator, the, my day to day is what I really do every day and weekly mm -hmm. is mostly documentation, review of ASEP and prerequisites, reassessment. And this time around, that is actually taking most of my time because uh, so CFIA actually uses what they call MOPs before. It's called Manual of Procedures, but now they change their regulations to SFCR. So they are moving most of their regulations on the, to SFCR, that is Safe Food for Canadian Regulation. So even though they are yet to enforce it, right, they are not asking plans to actually change their regulation or ensure their program aligns with Safe Food for Canadian Regulation. We are just being, pro we are being proactive right now. So I am working with the QA manager to actually, most of our program, to be compliant with that new regulation. Doing that, you have to read the whole program again. Now you're not just checking for a single update. You're not just reviewing your asset. You're reviewing it from the top, the regulation. What has changed? Where can I find this re new regulation? You have to go in depth. So that is actually taking most of my work, uh, my time currently. But aside from that, Every day when I get to work, I have to go through the records and uh, document them properly. I also cover up for QAs. So we are all cross-trained. Cross so in case someone is absent, the other person can cover for the person oh. who is absent. Yeah. That's really cool. That not only gives you a, another opportunity, because I could imagine if you get really like heavy into the documentation which you have to be obviously because there's so much documentation especially like yeah. in the meat industry but then as well having the opportunity to be cross-trained you know it gives you that extra level of maybe you can visualize those processes even better when you're going through the documentation yeah one good thing about documentation or reviewing is as you're reviewing you also have to do an on-site right oh you have, yes you have to make sure what. The, what you're reviewing or the tax or like what you're you have to confirm that the tax you're 
documenting is what is actually okay. so yeah so yes so you have to go out there to see if it corresponds to what you actually have in your procedures so that actually give you the opportunity to be out there on the floor to be involved in the whole process from maintenance from what maintenance does to what shipping does wow you know, yeah to what production does so yeah i again i didn't really realize that would be such an integral role to being a HACCP coordinator is that you have to go verify like that is a key thing with any f food safety programs is that your S SOPs or your standard operating procedures and of course your other variation like yes the HACCP matches so wow so that yeah. really that's one of the things I love about like the QA and the food safety role and like that department like you really get to like dig into like everything and see like all the processes and it just gives you such like a broad understanding of the whole plan and it's just amazing every day you keep learning something new that is the amazing part of me about this job so yeah. tell me like how did you end up getting into this because i i do know that you started from you went to university and you mm -hmm. did your master's degree so maybe this would be a great time to maybe walk our audience through your career journey and just like wherever you want to start and just talk about how it led you to where you are now. Okay, I would say like I actually did my bachelor's degree in animal science from Nigeria and my goal was actually to my first goal or okay. my first career choice was actually to be a lecturer. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's yeah. see how that happens. <laughs> that yeah. transition. You know, like, when you look at the opportunity, when you weigh the opportunity around you, you just have to choose one. So that was the closest to what I really wanted. So at that time, I just wanted to come to Canada, get my master's degree, and if possibly start a PhD degree, then go back and start lecturing. But then coming here, doing my master's degree, honestly, I was blessed with one of the best supervisors. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So like during our course, I took a mid science course and she took us to went to JBS. And that kind of exposed me to what happens in the meat industry, how big the industry is. I just thought that okay, I really want to do this. And I would say my career actually started from being an intern student at the federal meat plant. So I actually intend with our Canadian Premium Meat. That's a federal meat and slaughter plant here in Canada. And we mostly focused on exporting. And I interned there for four months. And it went by so fast. I really enjoyed my time there. I learned a lot. And after which, after my internship, I was offered a full-time job with them as a quality assurance technician. And within eight months of working with them, I was registered for ASEP certification. After the certification course, I was promoted to the ASEP coordinator of the plant. So I would wow. just say, yeah, I would just say like the job offer and the promotion was actually due to my curiosity to learn about all the processes in, in such a short time and my ability to take up on new tasks and excellently complete them. And I'm a very detail-oriented person. Yeah, so I was just so wanted to learn a lot about the industry. So that was how my career started. That's so, like, that is so cool. And it just goes to show, like, I think a lot of students who graduate, like, at the master's degree or who graduate with a PhD, like, I know that they can struggle to, you know, to, uh -huh. find, it, to find a job. But, like, look at how much your career has progressed just from you graduating from your, like, master's degree to, like, to, to being at like a HACCP coordinator and that's all because that you've put in that effort like you said and showed the details and I can see like some of the skills build up from your master's degree and how they complemented to get out in the industries but that is so cool like I could see how some of the pieces that you picked up during your master's degree went and kind of really helped you progress in part of me how some of those skill sets that you developed in your master's degree probably helped you, but it was because of your dedication that you really like progressed really quickly out of school. And I, I think that's impressive. But one of the things that I particularly was just curious about is you did mention that you enjoy the course with your professor with the meat science, but I, I wanted to know, was that your first exposure to animal science or meat 
what made you continue on that path? Because I do think that it, it's an interesting one. I just would like to know a little bit more about that decision. Okay, okay. Actually, that was not my first experience to make science. Okay, let me start from the foundation. <laughs> I was actually inspired by my country to become a mid scientist. Okay. Like I mentioned earlier, my bachelor's degree was in animal science. And during my year three, we actually, I think we visited a federal meat plant in Nigeria. And the condition of the plant showed there were no regulations in place for meat processing. Generally, in my country, meat is sold in an open market with little or no concern for meat quality, safety or quality because people just go to the market, you go to the seller and you're negotiating, touching the meat while negotiating on the price. Yes. And I think this doesn't just happen in my country a lot alone because I've met a lot of people from other countries here and we've actually had that conversation. Mm -hmm. So... This was actually what created the passion to wanting to know more about meat quality and safety and the desire to contribute to ensuring that meat produced is safe for human consumption, which was why I enrolled for um, master's in meat science and which is why I'm still in the meat industry. <laughs> wow. Okay. That makes more sense now because seeing firsthand about that, because obviously like as those who might know, like. I'm born and raised in Canada. I've that's all I've been exposed to. And be honest, like I've never really traveled out of the country either. So like my only impressions of how things are is just from seeing here. So it's really cool that you have that perspective of seeing both from your home country and just seeing how Canada is doing it differently. So that's really cool. Thank you. So you decided to continue to do your uh, master's. Do you want to talk a little bit more about what exactly you did for your project? What I did for my project? Yeah, I'd love to know. Okay, yeah. So I actually worked on improving beef toughness. I worked on those factors that could be trying to identify those factors that could affect meat quality, especially the toughness. So I worked more on the collagen aspect of it and connective tissues and post-mortem aging and also ways in which meat toughness can be improved by post-mortem aging. We aged the meat for three days and 14 days. So, and after that, we checked on their, or on their toughness. So definitely the meat from, for, that we aged for 14 days had increased tenderness compared to the meat that we aged for three days. And this was due to all the biochemical processes that took place, the breakdown of collagen, the breakdown of connective tissues during aging. Okay. And I also worked with extracting the genes that were responsible for beef toughness and tenderness during that postmortem aging. And some um, genes actually showed that they could be actively involved in improving tenderness. Okay. So this is just a summary of in I'm just <laughs> trying to simplify my <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. No I'm getting a good impression of what you did, but one of the things that I okay, as someone who studies like texture and all that, I just was like out of curiosity, like what do you mean by like toughness? In in what respect? Toughness could be defined as the toughness phase, the amount of different connective tissues like collagen and elastin. Oh, uh, so, okay. Exactly. So the amount of all those protein present in the meat. Okay. So, and postmortem aging helps to break them down. That's really cool. That's like yeah. really cool. <laughs> wow. So yeah. that, and I could, again, coming back to, with the animal science, like there's so many, it's so, such like an intricate, there's like food, that food is, if we think of it as, as a food material, there's just so much going on with the muscle fibers, the collagen, yeah. the protein, and there's so many cool like questions that, oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, it is an interesting one. But the thing is, <laughs> industries are not really open to, because of there's no space in the coolers to age your products for days before selling to customers, to consumers. 
that's true. That is unfortunately true. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you find that anything that you did during like your master's degree or your university degree, was there anything like skills that you picked up that you've been applying to your jobs outside of it? Yes, for sure. There are lots of skills that I picked. Uh, is it about how effective communication, critical thinking, decision making, solving problems? As mm. a research student, you have to be able to solve problems. <laughs> and also setting goals. We have a lot of deadlines to meet up mm -hmm. to your assignment, with your presentations. I would also say but let me talk about the effective communication. Coming from my country, we hardly get to present. We just go for presentation. Maybe, I think I did presentation twice while mm -hmm. I was in, doing my bachelor's degree. And that was for my, I would say that was for my bachelor's project, my final year project that I had to defend. While I was in school, we had a lot of, during my master's, we had a lot of presentations going on, even if you don't like to talk. <laughs> Fun times. I know the feeling. I swear I'm doing like presentations every three months. I'm like, what? I like, must everybody be a speaker? <laughs> <laughs> It's a not talked about thing that I find maybe it's like certain universities. Okay. So with the effective communication, so I guess that would be really important being in like a HACCP coordinator role where you're talking to a lot of different people in the, the plant. Yeah. So I would say effective communication, being able to pass a message across to people you work with, telling them why, because it's like production and being a, being a quality actually. As mm -hmm. officer, you have a lot of uh, understanding with people, mm -hmm. and if you don't communicate effectively, that can lead to a bigger issue. You know, you are placing product on hold because the temperature is not, you've not achieved, they've not achieved the temperature they are supposed to achieve, and shipping is planning to ship out those products, and you're telling the ship shipping manager or supervisor that you cannot ship out this program, mm -hmm. this product. Being able to communicate, being able to tell them that this is the reason, this is the, this is what the implication is going to be if you do this. And uh, this is a skill I would say I, I was able to acquire while I was in school because I, I, like, I, was, I considered myself not to be a good speaker when I came here. I don't like to talk much, but going through, going through university at the U of A and also with my supervisor, I did a lot of presentation and I took a course as well. It's called communication in science. And we were taught how to communicate effectively, both scientifically and in labor terms. And I also attended a lot of conferences, a lot of lab meetings. I was also taught on how to give feedbacks. And this has really helped that's actually really helped me a lot. Now I'm able to attend meetings with the management. I'm able to tell them this is the update. This is the new update we have now. Or maybe there is an issue going on. We have to implement corrective actions. I'm able to implement those actions. And it's, it's not just in speaking alone, you know. There is the written aspect of communication. You have a deviation or you got a car from CFIA, you have to write out, you have to perform your risk assessment, you have to write out your report. You know, being able to put all your findings or your investigation together is also an effective method to communicate. And I'm able to do those things. Wow. That's really cool like to hear because I think there's like a misconception with like graduate school that when you go, you just go in the lab, you go in the lab and then you just write your papers, you write your thesis and then that's it you don't talk to anyone you don't communicate but like clearly like you mentioned you know you're doing the lab meetings which teaches you to like get used to talking to others in a lab capacity because you do technically work with other students presentations like yes oh my gosh there's so many presentations that I do too so like I feel you and even just if anyone wants they can see that you've written an intricate very well written crafted like thesis proposal or the final thesis. So there's just so many different avenues that I just think that that 
is something that might get overlooked that maybe people, unless they've gone through that graduate experience, might not be actually familiar with it. So like as a student, you got to sell yourself that. And also thanks for um, sharing that at the beginning, you know, you, I would never be able to tell just based on this conversation that like you weren't someone who really was like very talkative or communicated a lot at like at the beginning of that. So it's clearly you've just transitioned to being someone who can very easily talk to. Yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> and did you find that when you went from your master's degree to like your full-time job, did you find that transition like difficult for you? For me, I would say it was not difficult. Why? Because like I said, I interned for four months, remember? I was just so curious during my internship that so much that I forgot that I was still in school. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe because I had a very wonderful manager <laughs> who was easy to work with. And I was not at the beginning or at the start of it or during my internship, I was not overloaded with work. I was give, actually given a project on uh, validation of lactic acid. We wanted to start using lactic acid as, a, as an antimicrobial agent. So I was just asked to like grab the carcass before application of lactic acid and after application of lactic acid. You know that so that we can set the count, the count if it actually if it actually reduced the count of aerobic significantly. So it, that was just like. A mini research, you know? <laughs> hey, I think that's so cool. Like that, I think that's like a good testament to the fact that you actually really liked your job, that you stopped thinking of it, but just like this giant learning experience. So, mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. it, it is funny because like one of the questions I had thought about, um, do you ever miss the learning aspect that you got from your master's degree? Like, I mean, I know when sometimes when people go into the workforce, they, they don't learn at such like a high capacity as their master's. But I'm going to take a guess and say that you are learning constantly, so you don't really have to miss it. I'm not missing it because every day, don't let me say every day, but we kind of do some mini science work in the meat industry. Like we collect samples, we send samples to the laboratory, we run in-house testing. We interpret results for E. coli, for salmonella, for campylobacter. Like we do all those kind of tests. We do validation. We do we do chef life study. Uh, so I wouldn't say like I miss school for now. I just miss. Okay, I would say I miss the using of statistical analysis. We use Excel at work, but mm -hmm. then you know I I I had to learn our software when I was an undergrad uh, when I was a graduate student. I actually miss using that software. <laughs> I don't know if I still know how to use it. Is that that's funny to you? Well, out of curiosity, which uh which software is it? Um, R. R. Okay, I've I've always stood away from that, but I know that it'd probably be really good to learn. I'm more of a Origin Pro, so. <laughs> yeah, I use that. I actually use that to analyze my data when I was in school. So, like, I actually miss that part, you know, gathering a lot of data, trying to, uh, you know, figure <laughs> that, them out, <laughs> uh, analyzing them, they report about them. But I would say, like, we actually do, like, mini projects. Mm -hmm. I work every day. So, like, where we have a diffusion, we have to collect, we have to put in, Stem tools, temperature monitoring device, collect those data, put them together, write a report on them. So it's kind of, you know, a mini project for me. Uh, maybe that is why I'm still not um, thinking of PhD. <laughs> <laughs> for now. I don't blame you. Well, I, I, for me, it was, I decided to do the transition because I could transition so I didn't have to complete my master's, then go do my PhD. So it, it worked wow. out for me. That's amazing. That's amazing. I would say, like, I think there are jobs out there. Aside from being in the meat industry, I'm sure there are jobs out there that would make you feel, that would make you not miss school, I guess. Okay. It's it's nice to hear. I, I, did, I was curious because, like, sometimes I'll be honest, I do, although I love my project and that, sometimes I do like how in my undergrad I was really, like, exposed to a lot of different, like, learning topics. So, that was kind of cool, but I definitely did like when I went to that full-time job, like it was a whole new set of learning when I was in QA. Like I, 
didn't really know much about like microbiology and that so that was really new for me did you enjoy being a QA there yeah for sure I definitely I'll be honest when I first got into the role, it was a little overwhelming for me just because I didn't have a background in food science or food safety. When I first got into the role, it was a lot for me just to take in. But as I continued to go into the role, I really did enjoy it. The only reason I didn't stay in the role is because I kept thinking about research and I was like, I really want to go back and do a master's. It just like after working for nine months, I still was mm-hmm. thinking about doing a master's. So I thought, okay, it's probably a good indication that I re- I still want to do it. So that that is yeah. one of the things. But I really did QA in terms of just like working with so many different like ind- people. It was like so new to me because being in university and working in, being an undergrad at a chemistry, you're only really exposed to like students and you might you get really accustomed to that type of thing so when I went into the workplace it was like a huge range of people from all walks of life and it was just it was that really tested how I had to communicate with different types of people because I'm so accustomed to you're a student I'm a student I hang out with students not (laughs) the whole world is not made up yeah the whole world is not made up of 18 to 25 year old students (laughs) So it, I, yeah. I did enjoy the role. And I do think that it really puts into perspective, like how important food safety is and like how the systems are in place. Like I was exposed to HACCP, like what you were doing and just how much thought is to put into these food programs. And it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like, and one of the things that I, I was curious, like, one of the things that I always think about, at least even when I'm doing my graduate degree at it now, is like having certain habits in that. So I was curious, do you have any like habits or just like certain things that you do that help you to be good at your job? Do you like maybe have like a morning routine or just, I'm just trying to get some background. <laughs> okay. I like this question. <laughs> I would say like, and that has actually helped me to be good at my job would be staying organized. Okay. Do you know why I paused? I paused because staying organized in the meat industry is like <laughs> the most difficult tax <laughs> you can think of because like food industry is a fast paced industry and it can be really challenging and uh, you have to keep thinking it's mentally taxing as well as physically. And you can be working on a particular tax right now and something comes up. You have to leave that immediately and, you know, move on to the next one. How do you remember you have a tax? What I do in the morning is that I make sure that I I outline my daily and unchanged tax every day or sometimes before I leave for the the end of the day, for the next day. I just make it, I, I have it to-do list that I have on my calendar or my decks. So I mm-hmm. just make that to-do list. I have to do this and I cross them out after completion every day. But for meetings and for sampling, so I would say my daily tasks would be documentation, how I stay organized. And I would say lastly, being able to prioritize and not procrastinate. First thing after I've completed in the morning, I know I have to complete my daily tasks, which is record verification, attend management meeting. After that, I start working on the reassessment and the report because the reassessment and the report is a yearly tax. So I have a tentative schedule for them. So I already grouped them, made them into groups for it for them to be easy for me because I know like sometimes I start working on the on the report, on the reassessment, and I don't even complete a section. So, because I get other tax, so mm-hmm. I already know that programmed myself to know that while working on this report, other tax might come in. What I do is once I get them, I immediately add them to my to-do list and I get to them as soon as possible. And I don't allow them to pile up. The more you leave those documentation or other tax, the more you forget to do, then you forget about them and the more you have less things to do. So, and it can be overwhelming. Okay. 
Yes, uh, staying organized is definitely a very important, <laughs> very important to actually succeed at your job. So it does sound like you've figured out a system that does work for you. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and and that does make me think about for students that are listening. I always like to ask my guests, but I'm going to tailor this question a little bit more for you. Okay. What advice would you give to students who are looking to get into a career in the meat industry? Well, actually, my first advice, which is a very important one, would be that that they should ensure they are passionate about choosing a career in the meat industry. <laughs> passion, passion is needed because meat industry is actually a fast-paced industry, like I mentioned earlier. The key point is because at the start of your career in the food industry or meat industry, the, the pay you get might not be what you expect compared to other careers. And what keeps you going is that passion that you have for it. But over time, with the proper years of experience, the necessary certification and right attitude, you get you, your, your pay will definitely increase. That's really interesting that you also include that little aspect because maybe someone doesn't think about that but yeah I would definitely think especially for the meat industry like you have to be passionate about it and, and clearly like you have that passion you have that really personal story about thinking about back home so it's really good advice <laughs> is there any lessons or there's any type of philosophies or just something that is important to you that you really take with you as you're going through your life in your career Okay, um, I would say like that would be to be focused, to be focused, mm -hmm. because uh, being focused, I would say, has helped me to have a defined goal. For example, I've had several opportunities to switch to other careers, you know, with less mental tact. I have decided to remain focused on being in the meat industry. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, I get a lot of questions, you know, talking about when I meet someone and we start talking and they're like, oh, so where do you work? And I'm like, I work in the meat industry. The first reaction I get is, what? Meat? Did you say meat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's a surprising thing for a lot of people, you know, and I know, like, I've never personally worked in a meat plant. I've had been exposed to the food industry, but like the meat industry is a whole different beast. And I think that it's, you know, you just want to dive deeper into like why someone's thinking that but from yeah. what we yeah I, like, why do you how do you how do you survive in that because meat is a very critical aspect of food like the safety of meat mm -hmm. is a very like it's i would say it's very hard to ensure meat safety than other foods maybe like milk might be difficult you know more you know, it might be harder. I don't know because I've never had to work with the dairy industry. But meat, you, you are conscious of so many microorganisms. You're conscious of E. coli, salmonella, and all of those bacteria. Mm -hmm. And if you make a simple mistake, it, it might affect a lot of people. Out, yeah, it's it's a very taxing one. But then decided. Like I told you, maybe because I'm, I was inspired because of my country, I've decided I want to be in the meat industry. I want to ensure that people get good quality and uh, good quality meat to eat and people get meat that are safe for human consumption. So that is just my focus. I've just, yeah, I will say focus. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And you know what? I'm going to leave it there because I think that you've left on such a, amazing note just to you your focus has clearly led you into doing a graduate degree is not an easy thing transitioning to a full-time position like these are things that are not easy and you've done so much just in, in the past few years that I it does go to show that what you believe in being focused your passion and all that it's really coming through so thank you yeah. so much Esther for taking time to come on the show I really enjoyed this conversation and getting more to know about you and the people who like to go into the meat industry <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me as well that was episode 49 of the food grants podcast all the notes to this podcast can be found on the food grants blog or by clicking on the student and grads tab on the homepage. 
There you can find any notes to past or future episodes. Do you know anyone you would like me to interview on the show? Perhaps yourself, or maybe there's a specific career path you would like me to explore. Then reach out and let me know. You can email me at veronica at foodgrads.com or any of the Foodgrads social media channels. Hope to hear from you. Well, that was great. I mean, I am so happy that I was finally able to get Esta on the show and talk about what she does as a HACCP coordinator and really dive more into the role. It was really inspiring to hear Esta's story about why she decided to go into the meat industry and just hearing that firsthand perspective, I think that just makes all a better food safety professional when you come from a place of caring and, you know, wanting to take care of people. That's what I want to hear when it comes to the people who are behind our food systems. But overall, it really does show that if you are a person who wants to see change in the world, then you have to do it yourself. Overall, I just love learning about these specialized food safety roles, and hopefully in the future, I can continue to learn even more and share it with you. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode. Thank you everyone so much for listening, and I will see you next time. <music>